what's going on guys so today as you can tell by the title and thumbnail we do got a special video for y'all that is the opbr beginners guide so i decided to make this video now during the 3.5 anniversary because we are in the heart of the anniversary but still not on the actual date yet so the actual date of the 3.5 anniversary is august 25th uh so when that comes out we should have a new ex character uh, which are the super ultra rare characters i'll explain all the character tiers in a bit but uh knowing that i do know a lot of new players are going to be joining and trying to understand the game grasp it learn the little aspects of it so this video will be a general guide as to what you should be doing i'll be going over a lot of little intricate little things in depth as well so even if you are an experienced player i'm sure you'll find some tips and tricks that you didn't know before so to begin we're gonna start by breaking the game into three main aspects so the first aspect of the game is the gotcha aspect so this is where you you get this uh currency in-game currency called rainbow diamonds right you could you could buy these so you could probably see how this game could turn pay to win you could just keep buying these and summoning on the strongest character but that being said even though it can be a pay to win game uh, to an extent you can also get by by just spending zero dollars on this game or even like a little uh, a couple bucks here and there you could get by but that being said uh as long as you spend your gems wisely and you know summon correctly save all that you should be able to get to the top rank in uh the main game mode which is league battle but i think it's important to also look at what the main goal of this game is so with this gotcha aspect you you obviously are going to roll for pretty much one piece characters so when you go for these characters you'll start off with level 60 these characters right here are uh like three stars and two stars so they're gen originally three stars but the characters you summon for are going to be four stars and stuff so as you can see these guys are four stars uh right here on the on the left so once you get them level 60 for example if i have this big mom if i have another if i get another copy she'll be level 70 if i get another copy she'll be level 80 eight once she gets to 80 that's when you unlock these trait twos for the characters so then she becomes five star as you can see and then you get extra traits on these characters so um yeah you definitely want to focus on getting a level 80 in the beginning so you have like pretty much a fully unlocked character and once they are level 80 every copy after that is plus five so once you get them 80 then you get another copy of them then it's 85 another copy 90 another copy 95 and lastly level 100 which is the max so that is the first thing to keep in mind. Uh, so you start off with level 60, then you'll wanna work your way up to level 80, unlock all the traits. And what you wanna do eventually is get them to level 100 so you could have this third metal slot. So we'll also go over what these metals exactly are, but they are pretty important because they give you extra stats and stuff. So I could increase my HP, I could increase my HP attack and also defense, uh, also crit, but crit is kind of useless i've tried it out it doesn't really work before we focusing on leveling up the characters we should probably know which characters are even worth leveling up so pretty much how this game works is there's a couple tiers to the characters so we have the three star characters so like these little guys they're as you can see they're they start off with three star when you originally get them not four star like some of the other characters so these guys start off with three stars and generally you don't want to level them up uh completely but once they start hitting level 100 and stuff you do want to level them up because you could use them as your support characters so you don't actually bring the characters into the field but you could use them as support we'll go over that as well so then you're probably asking how do i know which characters are 
worth leveling up or worth summoning for in the gacha aspect. So the way to do that is to actually probably go watch a tier list video. I have a tier list on my channel. I will be making an updated one soon as well after this anniversary is over. But tier list videos help a lot because you will see generally what characters are better. But back to the tiers of the characters themselves, um, not like not like SS tier, S tier and all that. I mean, their category of characters in this game specifically. So um, we do have the two stars, three stars I was showing you guys. And then stepping up from that, we actually have characters that are called step ups. So step up characters. And how you can tell which character is a step up or not is by going into the exchange. So as you saw how I did that, I go into exchange. And once you go into the battle points, not the red one, this one right here, the regular battle points. So if you go in here, every character in here is a step up and you could buy their frags to get them leveled up pretty much. So I focus characters that are closer to being six star or five star. So for example, um, uh, I have a lot of them maxed out. Obviously, I've been playing for a while. Um, so I guess I'll just buy some of the ones I don't have already. For example, this guy, Bone Kichi. So he's also a step up. I like to go in here. I use these points that you get from just playing League Battle and stuff. So um, boom, I bought that. And you can buy step up fragments from this shop right here. We're going to go over all the all these shops eventually. But I'm just showing you guys how you could realize which characters are step ups and which aren't. And generally this game does have power creep. So all these older characters are probably going to be worse than the characters up here. And I say generally because like you have Usahachi up here, the latest step up. Um, I don't think he's actually latest step up, but um, we have Usahachi up here and he's completely 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 horrible i'm gonna be honest like if i'm telling my friend to play this i'm gonna be honest i'm not i'm not gonna be like oh yeah go for the usahachi he's cool like no i'm gonna tell you not to go for him you know but characters like vista izo um other characters like you know uh what's her name golden week these characters are very strong and compared to even the next tier of characters which are bounty fest so how you check if a character is bounty fest is by going to the exchange exchange shop right above this yellow one so this red one you actually have to pay money to even access it um you buy this special rush 30 for four dollars which i personally don't get you can if you want if you're grinding like if you're grinding really heavy for a month i would recommend you get this if you want but this is where you see if a character is bounty fest so every character in here is bounty fest and these characters are technically better but like i said some aren't as great like, for example, I would say, like, um, most of them are good. For example, like Moria, Gecko Moria, kind of an older unit now. And I wouldn't say he compares to even Vista or Izo, uh, which are step up characters. So that's why I say it's better to watch a tier list and see, get a general idea of which characters are better than the others. But it is important to know that there are step ups bounty fest and then the highest tier of character which you can't even buy the frags for in here are called ex units or the extreme units these are the ultra rare units a little harder to get because their rates in the gacha system are lower so the ex units out currently are roger who originally came out for the price of 1750 rainbow diamonds around there and now he is around 950 rainbow diamonds so very cheap now and i would personally recommend that if you are like making a new account or whatever i would say go for roger because he's very solid he is the king of the pirates of course so that's that but roger is an ex unit so if i go on show drop rates over here as you see he has a 0.2 percent chance to get as compared to the other characters um, that are even, you know, like even rare to get. But yeah, 0.2% chance. That's generally what the rates are for EXs. Zephyr is the other EX. He is the current 3.5 anniversary EX. So the latest EX to ever come out. 
Meanwhile, Roger came out like a year ago or two years ago, actually. So it's been a while. But as, as you can see, Zephyr is 0.2% chance. So now we've covered all the different rarities of, of characters in OPBR. There's also Cola units that you can get from here. But this is more late game. Uh, you get these Cola after you have level 100 characters. And on top of having them level 100 already, you get another copy while summoning. So then they'll give you just Cola, 50 Cola or so. So yeah, that's how you get that. Generally, they're not the best characters, but it's, it's cool because yeah, once you have a bunch of max characters, you just get them for free. Next thing you gotta worry about is, well, what are the right banners to summon on? Like there's so many banners here. I don't know what to summon on. So uh, pretty much how this banner system works is it's split. So if I click the Uta, as you can see, Uta is here. So the normal scout, yeah, she only has one normal scout. This banner right here, probably the worst banner we have ever gotten in the history of one piece banner rush and why i say this is because she has no guaranteed uh pity so you could uh pretty much spend 5,000 gems which is the cap of rainbow diamonds you could even have at one time you can't have more than 5,000 gems but you could end up going 5,000 gems on her and not get one copy of her even though she's one percent chance she, she's not as low rates as the ex units but she doesn't have a guaranteed unlike roger where roger you'll get him guaranteed after 950 zephyr you'll get him guaranteed after 1750 or so so you'll get these characters guaranteed uta you won't get guaranteed at all so if you're a new player i would never spend on this type of banner and generally i wouldn't spend on bounty fest at all unless you really like the character because these bounty fests are always very very bad banners they're kind of for like whales uh, i would say um you want to spend on more so like other banners like step up banners which offer you good deals so i'll put some screenshots up on the screen for y'all what banners uh should be good for you but generally if there's step up banners that have um extra little rewards like frag four star gold fragments um you know like ex skill orbs or boost two orbs but also feature bounty fest in them my recommendation if you're completely a beginner starting the game what you want to summon on or re-roll for or if you buy a gem account something like that what you want to go for is the ex unit people could call you an ex abuser ex meta slave whatever but you're trying to you're trying to get to the top ranks so you, you need the best characters and the best characters generally are the newest and latest greatest ex units the extreme units the extreme bounty fest as you can see right here um extreme bounty fest so these are the ones you want to go for and that's what you're going to start for so wait for ex don't summon on bounty after you do get your ex stop like get them to level 80 if you can and then stop then after that you never want to summon on bounty fest and all that and just save for the special really good banners um and my free to play account has done this wisely so i have level 80 dofi i have some other characters on my free to play account without spending a dime because i spent my gems wisely uh another thing to keep in mind are these little scout points and stuff it might be confusing in the beginning but pretty much as you can see like if i summon uh on the shiki i'll get plus 10 scout points for doing a 50 pull plus 10 so that plus 10 goes towards this black ticket on the top over here and if you do the math you need to do 750 rainbow diamonds to get to this first black ticket and that black ticket will probably give you one of the guaranteed characters so if you could find it somewhere here uh let's see who the guaranteed is now so if i were to go for that black ticket i will get a guaranteed roger but uh, in the beginning, you will get like whatever, whatever the banner is with these black tickets. You could always look. So yeah, you need 750 for that. But keep in mind, like it's not always 750 because look at this Roger. You'll get him quicker because instead of plus 10 scout points, you're getting extra scout points per uh, step. So that's pretty nice as well. So those are things to keep in mind with this summoning system. If you always have any questions. It's better to go ask someone in the Discord server or something before you summon. 
because uh, it's better to be patient. As you can see, these are 12 days left, a bunch of days left on some of these, like three days and stuff. And um, yeah, so you always have time to summon. So it's never it's never wise to rush in and just get shafted or waste your rainbow diamonds. You should get a bunch of rainbow diamonds in the beginning when you first start off, especially during the anniversary. And you can even get more if you first first of all go to your solo missions. So if you go to your solo mission, then look at this. You get pretty much four per four rainbow diamonds per mission. There's a bunch you could do here. Then you go to practice mode, so you could do these, and then you do the hard mode. So you do normal, hard, and even I haven't completed the latest ones, so I don't have all the rainbow diamonds from them. But in the beginning, this is gonna be your bread and butter for getting rainbow diamonds and starting off strong. After you do complete all those missions, then it's gonna slow down a little, your gems are gonna slow down, but then you gotta start focusing your daily mission so you could get um it's usually one gem per day but since it's like an event right now you are getting two gems per day if you do all the missions so make sure you guys do those and eventually once you get to the point where you start doing dailies and stuff you want to push to ss league where you will be able to get even more rainbow diamonds every season from here so now that we've talked about the gotcha aspect of the game we're going to talk about account building so before you even go in and play league battle which is the main game mode of course you have league battle and you have challenge battles and league battle is the main game mode it's a 4v4 you know 4v4 pvp five flags on the stage who whichever team has the most flags at the end wins right so very simple game mode on paper but before we get into gameplay tips and all that we have to talk about managing your account and building your account so you're as strong as possible before you even go into the main game mode of course the first step was to summon get your rainbow diamonds up and start summoning to hopefully get a level 80 character now once you do get a level 80 or if you don't have a level 80 that's fine as well we're going to talk about how you could start leveling leveling them up even more past level 80 so if you look over here we have uh, this big mom so how I would get her to level 80 if I never got her like I only got one copy of her is you could use these frags over here four star frags so you have gems to summon on characters and we use frags to actually level them up so as you can see over here it says remaining I need 325 to get her to level 80 um, so uh, if you remember the beginning of the video, I was saying, well, this big mom, if I got another copy, I would get her to level 70. If I got another copy after that, level 80. And then from there, after level 80, then another copy would be 85, 90, 95, all that. But each copy is equivalent to 200 four-star frags right here. So if I gave her 200 right now, she would turn into level 73. If I gave her another 200 after that, she would turn into 83, making her a five star that I could probably bring into league battle and do stuff with. So yeah, that's how frags work. How you get these frags is mainly from getting to pushing to SS league. Once you're in SS league, you get 50 frags every season. So that's why I tell people your first main goal in this game is always to push to SS league. You can also get these four star frags from challenge battle and you do all these and get um, four star frags there. Another thing to keep in mind is that there is the exchange shop that I was showing you guys earlier. So you could get step up characters to level 80 or level 100 even by just buying their character frags from the battle point shop. So if I go into battle points, you could buy these, you could buy 10 per day and it might, it might not sound like a lot, but it does add up. So I buy Vistas every day and then I give, go to gift shop boom i got it so you try buying 10 per day you're buying those every day you also want to use your special training so if you go into this daily tabs we're gonna use special training right here and you also get a bunch of frags from here so use your bounty coins don't even worry about the bounty coins these start building up a lot so you replenish these every time and then then these characters run for like 12 hours or so while 
getting you while well, you get frags for them. So then you could do this, get a couple frags, and uh, this slowly builds up. I'll put them put up some stats on the screen so you can see specifically how long it takes um, to get these. But you could do any character you want, even the EXs. As you can see, I have Zephyr on here, so I'd be uh, letting him run pretty much until he's level 100. Uh, you also see this little cheer button over here. You could cheer every once per day. And this is where the alliance system actually plays a role. So if you go under alliance, uh, you could cheer. Your teammates could cheer uh, every once a day. And once those cheers are sent out, you could use those cheers under the special training to pretty much shorten the cooldown of these um, special training stuff. So that's really nice as well. So say this Moria is my main character. I got him level 80. I'm happy where uh, where he is with the five star and stuff. I got all this traits. But next, you want to focus on character boost. So there's character boost. You you can use to pretty much increase their stats, and then you gain an extra boost trait, which is increased crit damage. So this is your boost one trait, and then this is your boost two trait. So all these boost ones, how you could get these orbs and stuff. So there's HP, there's um, attack and defense. So how you could get these is by doing weekly missions. So you need 90 per thing. So I just wasted 90 on this HP. Then I could go in 90 on this um, attack. So it's always 90 per stat per character, right? So boom, boom, boom. Level these up. And now he's boost one and then i could use 15 boosts the special boost one trait right here so boom now i have boost one i can't even boost two right now because these are actually much more difficult to get than the boost uh, one traits since boost one you could get from weekly missions so if i go back we already covered the daily missions these are for your gems mainly that's how you get your gems then once we look at weekly mission, this is how you get your boost one. So pretty much you do league battle with red element and win. Do league battle with blue element, win. Green element, win. You charge up the treasure with a defender. You got some of those. There's also you kill people in an attacker and you capture flags with a runner. So pretty much they want you to play your role. And then you should get uh, enough boost one for one unit every week. So it's really nice. You could boost one a character a week and start with your main character. So if I go back to my Moria, saying that's my main character, I boost one him. Uh, I'll eventually boost to him. And how you get boost two orbs is by going and playing the challenge battle. So you could kind of start seeing a pattern here. You want to do your weekly missions by doing league battle, boost two, you do challenge battle, you get boost two orbs. Of course, you also get gems, you get frags and stuff, which are really nice and all that another thing with challenge battle is you could buy the battle passes so uh looks like i do got to go back in there so i'll talk about it quick so i don't get copyrighted but as you can see this pass rewards you could buy the battle pass for 99 cents for the first one which is goes up to like around here then three dollars get all the rewards and if you're a light spender i would recommend that because you get around 45 to 60 frags or so um which is really nice and this challenge battle resets every week and it's always a new game mode right now it's tons of treasure we also have brawl a we got like cruise battle and my favorite tag battle which is a little 2v2 challenge battle so it always changes every week and you always want to make sure you uh, prioritize completing this before a league battle because even if you're a new player you should be able to complete the challenge battles get all the rewards and um obviously as a new player it's difficult to get to ss league but it's not difficult to actually complete challenge battles so make sure you do that the next step would be skill orbs so these skill orbs you should acquire easily and um up to level four it's very easy so if i if i have like i level level four everyone but once you go to level four you see it only requires all of these so you do that but then once you get them to level four getting the level five um requires usually 10 of these things but five for of course these like uh like four star units and stuff three star units i'm sorry but um for the actual four star units they require 10 
So how you get these is also you get a couple from weekly missions. You get some from the challenge battles and all that. But you will get around 20 every time you end your season in SS. So that's why I really tell people to push to SS. Once you get to SS, you can just stop playing for that season and let it do its thing because, um, yeah, you, you'll get the rewards at the end. So SS is very important to get gems, to get um, frags, and to get boost orbs and also these um, special orbs. So, so it's kind of like a cascade effect. So it's harder to get to SS in the beginning, but once you get to SS once, it should be easier and easier because you're getting more rewards to upgrade your characters and get stronger. All right, so next we're gonna be talking about the medals. So we talked about character boost, the level, the skills. Of course, read your character traits, try to understand them, try to make sense of them. If you don't, go watch gameplay on the character, see how other people are really playing that character specifically, if he is your main, and um, learn that character inside out, right? But once you got all those leveled up, then we're gonna move on to medals. And medals are just as important as having a character to level 80. So I could bring a, this character to league battle, and I'll get washed by maybe even a level 60 character because he got really strong medals, you know? All right, so if we go into the medals tab, we have a bunch of little um, sections here. So let's just go in order. Craft, this is where you craft your medals. How you get these is by playing in league battle. Um, if you play the character in league battle, you'll get that character's medals. You'll get metal fragments, and then you need three metal fragments to craft one medal. You can also get these metal fragments from the solo mode called 60 Second Battle right here. So you could choose the character you want medals for. And I could change it to, you know, to Soro. And then I would just play it. Once you play it, you get three metal fragments. So nice and easy. Then you could go build that metal and craft it. But these medals, I really don't care too much about anymore. Of course, when you're starting off, you do want to build some of these, like the CP9 medal. This is a really good medal. Uh, any Luffy medal is really good, uh, especially the Dressrosa Luffy. So if you get Bounce Man, uh, this one's really good. And also the Luffy medal, which is the Law and Luffy Alliance medal. Um, so Luffy medals like, like this one. So to know which one you should focus on crafting and upgrading, it's a little difficult, but I'll explain to you guys how it works. But generally, you want to get like increased damage and stuff on attackers and all that. And um, for runners, you want capture speed. For defenders, of course, you want damage reduction. So if I look at this one, for example, damage reduction. So you want to focus metals like that. But also, you do pair these metals. So once you're at level 80, you're allowed to use two metals per character, right? So you want to pair these metals to make sure they're like, you know, syncing together. So, so if I go back to my Moria, uh, he's an attacker. So that Luffy set would really be good on him. So if I paired him, if I go on order received, right? So I just crafted a bunch of Luffy metals and also a bounce man metal. So now you could see the little arrows because they're paired up together. Now, if I go on the tags, these medals have pretty much the same tags that are pairing up. So if I go to Dress Rosa, now I'm getting boost skill one cooldown. I'm getting boost skill two cooldown. I'm getting uh, dodge, uh, dodge cooldown, capture speed, damage increase, more damage increase. So as you can see, like the more tags you have, the the more the more stronger your character is pretty much getting so it's better to get medals with more tags and see see how you can fit them you go of course like click them go with medals with same tags see see what you can work with for yourself and try fitting um fitting these medals with specific tags if you know what i mean and once you have these like say you choose these medals you're like okay these look good but now they're zero star medals they don't have any they're not upgraded so how you would upgrade these is by clicking them and then going in the upgrade tab. So I have these already upgrading. We're gonna, we're gonna just finish these up. So then I would say, well, let's upgrade these, uh, these Luffy medals and then also the bounce man medal that I have equipped already. They're already equipped, right? So we're gonna start upgrading those. 
What I like to do is use these little hammers. You can also get these from playing 60 second battle and doing the weekly mission. Um, I like to do the hammer for the first uh, three hours because I'm not going to play the game. I'm not going to come back in that short amount of time. Maybe in eight hours, I will come back. So I like to do it like this. I leave those to it. And now these already upgrade the first trait. And then it's going to upgrade the second. And then um, then once this is done, I'm going to upgrade it again for the third. And as you can see, you get different, different traits on them that you are looking for. Before you start going all willy-nilly upgrading these little general medals and stuff, what you really need to focus is event medals. So whenever there's an event medal out, you want to focus on upgrading as many as you can for these. So, so far, only a couple of these event medals have actually came back into the game. Most of them do not come back to the game and they're just one-time limited event medals. So you really want to craft these. You get, you get their fragments just from playing league battles, doing the little missions and stuff. Just read, read what missions you got to do. But what you want to do is always have these event medals upgrading and you want to try getting a couple nine star of them so if i keep upgrading them like boom keep them going you want to build a couple nine star ones so uh once you have them crafted upgraded you upgrade them fully then you could go to the third tab which is transfer trait so now how this works is i look for the ones that are um already have a three star so i'm gonna bookmark this one because it has a three star so now say i wanted to um make this a nine star medal this is a seven star medal because if you add up the stars you got three plus five um plus seven right so with the stars but i'm gonna keep this little three star because that's really good and let's see if i can get a different one such as um these so actually actually i don't want to transfer it to this i'm gonna look at the other ones so, for example, I want to change because this is a good metal. It's 14%, unlike this one, which is 12%. So, this is more. So, I'm going to try transferring some, some of the other metals. So, this other straw hat one, if I transfer it, it's a 33% chance, you know, to get a one third chance to get them. So, boom, I messed it up. Damn, I didn't get it. But what I would do is retry it. You don't want to go crazy with it because it costs rainbow diamonds but i like to limit myself to maybe three times so all right so one rainbow diamond let's see if i get it no i didn't get it we're gonna try again let's see do i get the trade i want boom i got the trade i want and now this metal is a six plus six or a three plus three sorry so six and it's a seven star metal and then if i confirm continue transferring boom and then lastly i'm gonna try getting another trade on it uh, which is maybe this one, this HP trait. Or I'll just try getting this defense trait and make it a complete defense metal. Can't transfer it when it's bookmarked, so remove it from bookmark. Transfer. Boom. First try, baby. First try. So now it's a nine star metal, just like that. So no, I don't want to continue transferring because now I have a nine star little chopper metal. And this chopper event metal is already gone. So now I have a nine star, but I'm not going to delete these other ones because I don't know if it's ever going to come back. So that's why I like to always pick up extra copies, even if they're not nine stars of these event medals, because maybe in the future, some YouTubers like, oh, this is a crazy metal set. You, you got to try it, but you don't even got the medals. So, um, yeah, as you can see, that's the general way of transferring traits. Another way to transfer these traits is by go in so if i transfer this if i say i don't have any of these left and i still want to use this metal then i would use items so these items you acquire from pretty much just playing you get them from league battle you get them from grinding the challenge battle and getting top ranks you'll get specific ones such as this so when the character's straw hat pirates increase your attack by 40 percent or when the character is low gear increase attack by 18 percent so yeah that's also another thing to keep in mind is the percentage it goes from uh 11 12 14 those are the basic ones you could get and then these high rank ones are the 18 percent medals which is what you really want to look for and as you can see i save them i don't even spend these because eventually if i want to make a metal set i'll whip these out 
I have I also have a 24% medal. We are not going to talk about that because 24% medals are for whales. We did get one free one, but 24% medals are OP because think about it. You could do three traits, right? You could have three traits per medal. So if you have 24, 24, 24, that's around uh, 72. The cap for each percent is 70%. So, um, so that pretty much brings it where you could have a 70% HP, 70% attack, 70% defense if you have 24 medals on each. So we're, we're not going to get into that, but uh, it is good to keep in mind that the cap for each stat is 70%. So, for example, if I just look for medals that only have, um, you know, let me show you, let me show you real quick. So I'll show you some of my metal sets that I have. So I have the triple Luffy set, right? This I use on my attackers in general. So I have this one capped out where the defense is already capped to 70%, 70%. So if I add more defense to it, it's not even going to affect it because it's already capped at 70%. Um, you also have, I know some people look at these um, fixed traits. So you have these fixed ones. Generally, you want to use percentage. But once you have, say you have 70% attack already, then you could pop in another fix to add on to that. So it's 70% plus 160 flat attack. So um, the, the, the cap for flat is 300. So you can't just add like three flat attacks and hope to get a bunch of that. It, the cap is 300. So you could have plus. So the total for the metal would be 70% plus the 300 flat. Before we move on to like the next part, I also want to show you guys how you yourself can think of good metal sets to make. So as you can see, like I'll show you all my sets. I have the damage reduction set for defenders. I use that for all my defenders. I use this one for quick cap. This is for my runners. Triple Luffy for my attackers. Um, CP9 for like crit based attackers. Uh, another defender set. And then another, like some of these sets are weird but I like to experiment with them. But generally I have my three main sets at the top. So defender, runner, attacker set. And then these guys got their traits. If you're using an attacker, increase defense, you know, if you're using runner, do all this. So I got these specifically by grinding top ranks in challenge battle over time. So if you go here, you can look at the ranking rewards. If you grind the top ranks, you get 18% medals and stuff. So that's really nice. That's how you get those. But instead of just, you know, looking at trying to copy my metal sets, how you can make your own set is by actually like sort of like building off what you have. So you would want to look at your main character. Uh, a good example I like to give is Dressrosa Zoro. So I would read through his traits. I'm like, OK, so when I do my skill one, I go into the color of arm state. So I really want to be in skill one a lot. So I do want skill one cooldown, right? And once I'm in skill one, I get increased crit. Uh, I reduce damage and stuff. And when, when I do crit, I recover HP and I increase my crit percent even more. So I'm seeing a lot of crit, like crit, crit, crit. This character looks like a crit based unit. So when I go to my medals and I'm looking to make a set, so I go to save set. I'll just choose like a random one here. Like I have my experimental one. So for example, um, this one, right? If I wanted to just get rid of this, whatever. So now I'm trying to make a Zoro set, right? Let's make a Zoro set. I would be like, okay, well, let's look at uh, what medals I have and I'm going to filter it based on, well, I want skill one, right? But when I look for it, I'm looking more so for crit based skill one so I, i'll be looking through these all right when your hp is less than boost skill one this guy is when area around your treasure skill one um but since zoro is a crit let's see if i can find some like one that well if i crit can you give me skill one and for example right here this Ezo child event metal that sadly i forgot to upgrade at all so i don't really <laughs> I can't really use it, but this would be a good metal set to use on Zoro because look at that. When I crit, 
he crits a lot, I'm gonna get skill one cooldown, which will allow me to get even more hockey state and just spam that skill. So then, once I have my first like main metal I want to use, then I could look at uh, things that could go with him. So he's a Land of Wano, he's a Kozuki clan, and he's a child. So uh, maybe I could pop in like, um, you know, oh, look at that. Kiku knows you, also crit based. And let's see if I have a Kiku uh, child medal. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. Um, so if I, she's not skill one anymore. She's HP recovery. So if I look for that, so I do have a Kiku. And now look at that, their tags line up. I'm gonna get skill one cooldown when I crit. I'm gonna get HP recovery when I crit. And then lastly, I could slap in, you know, like any other, like the Sanji you also get more HP recovery, so why not slap that in since you're getting that Land of Wano skill 1 cooldown? And that would be a good, decent set for Zoro because it's specifically for him. And then after I have this set, I'll click OK. And then I would go in and like, you know, edit. Then I would upgrade this, see what I could get, transfer traits like I showed you guys, and try building a metal set for him. Uh, for Zoro specifically, I would focus HP and attack because uh, he does heal heal his hp so you would want a more hp pool that you could heal back up you know what i mean so that's where my brain is thinking when i'm making medals and stuff so i really want you guys to make your own medals like read through your main characters traits and stuff and try coming up with specific medals with medals you have and what you can work with not what other youtubers or other players are doing for their characters because obviously they got they got experience and they already got their built up sets like for me i usually just use these three main sets that i have every time but for specific characters like zoro i have my specific set the crit based set where i get hp recovery and skill two cooldown every time i crit and stuff so um yeah that is pretty much metals done so make sure you guys are um make sure you guys are doing that don't be spending your spending your hammers like crazy because like i said there are crazy event medals such as that lucy event medal we also got that wolf medal we got shiryu of the rain medal medals like that that's when you want to really hammer hammer down like you know go crazy with the hammers but for now just do how how it taught you upgrade it first and then let it upgrade for eight hours all right, so now for the last aspect of account building. I know this section was a little longer than uh, the others, but this is the most important section to me. That's why I wanted to really stress the medals and stuff. But now let's say we have our main character. He's level 80. Let's just assume he's boost two. And let's assume we already skill fived him. I don't want to waste it on Moria specifically, but let's just use our imagination and think he's level five, level five skill. He's boost two. And he's already got his nine star medals, like really nice medals for attackers and stuff. And he's looking, looking clean, right? He's a strong character. But that character is not going to do anything if you don't have a strong support. So let's try showing you what, how to make support really. So I'm going to use uh, like this, for example. So let's, let's get rid of all of these. All right, so now I have my Moria in the first like main character slot i'd probably rock you know like a blue generally you do want to keep the same color for both characters so i'll slap on i don't know like luffy taro you know like we're going classic units right now so now that i have two blue units that would mean i want all blue if you did blue and green then you would you could split it to like five blues five greens in the support but you won't have as high percentage so um the first thing you could do is, of course, just auto select. And you don't want to prioritize it on score bonus because this is for um, this is for challenge battles. So as you can see, I get plus 280 um, challenge battle score every time I play. So don't do that. You could do it for your challenge battle team, of course. But if you're just doing a regular team for league, you, a general way to start would be to do auto select, right? And it'll choose your strongest characters with medals equipped and all that and put it and try giving you the strongest percent. So 163.9% is pretty high. So as you can see, each character affects it. And boom, I'm losing a lot of percent every time I drop a character. So in the beginning, when you're starting off the game, we're going to focus on getting that highest percent possible. 
How you do that is by putting characters in your support that are, well, closer to level 100. So as high level as they can. Of course, they have to be the same color. That affects it as well. You can put other color, but look, um, this Kaido, like this Roger, if I put him in instead of the Croco, it goes from 163.9 to 158.9. So you lose a significant amount of percentage if they're not the same color, even though they're the same, um, you know, same type and all that. So if I put in this Akainu, he drops it. You lose 3% pretty much. So it's not bad. But you want to keep the same color. You want to try making sure they're the highest level possible. You want to make sure they do have skill 5. Like literally every little thing you would do to your main character, you would want to do to the support characters as well. Like I gave them 9 star medals. The thing with these support characters is the medal itself doesn't matter. Like I got crit and stuff. I put just random medals on it. Like just random medals, you know, like just slap it. This got crit on it. I don't care about it. It doesn't have to have the same tags or anything. Like it does not matter whatsoever for your support characters as long as they're level 9 medals and they're leveled up and stuff. So and everything you would do to your main character, you eventually want to do to your support characters. But that being said, obviously focus your main character in the beginning because that's more important. After your main character is as high level as you can get him, then you start doing what you would do to your main character to your support characters. And in the beginning, generally just focus on this percent number, trying to get it higher, trying to get these guys leveled up, boosted up, all of that, and giving them nine star medals, all of them. But once you're at that stage where you're like, okay, well, I have higher support, then you could look at character tags. So as you can see, I have 163.9, but it's not even a bunch of tags. So if I go to my main team, boom, I have attacker, straw hat, zoning, new world with 161.2. So I lose a bit of percentage that I could actually get back if I just put medals on uh, this little guy right here. So... If I put some metals real quick, um, boom. So this right here, 164.2. And it's got attacker, straw head, zone, new world. Like a bunch of tags on it, right? So how you would look at these tags is by looking at the support character. And you click this little guy right here. And you can see all the different tags these guys have. So these tags stack up to six. So you have six characters with the same tag, six attackers, boom. You have six straw hats, boom. You have six Zoan, boom. You have six New World, boom. And this is where the One Piece knowledge comes in, where you're like, okay, well, I know my characters. Like, I know he's from New World, so I could put him in there. He's from Grand Line. I put him in there. He's a Zoan or he's a Logia, Paramecia. You know, like, this. that's where the knowledge comes in. And I really do enjoy building, like, this part of the game, like, account building, because uh, it's very fun to make teams for me. But... Yeah, so you want to focus the percent and then tags. Generally, Luffy's upgrade them. Always upgrade Luffy's. Like right now, we did get the film red Luffy. Everyone should be able to get a max, if not boost two or hyper boost two. And uh, we didn't talk about hyper boost, but that is more so late game. We'll talk about that right now. But everyone should pick up this Luffy because he's amazing support if you look at his tag every Luffy is always amazing support he's got attacker straw hat paramecia captain new world worst gen um power users doesn't matter because it doesn't give you anything but uh the rest of the tags do but generally Luffy's choppers uh Zoans are really good because Zoan tag like you could click these tags and see what they do so attacker gives you more attack and critical uh, critical damage with straw hat. Uh, Zoans give you reduced damage reduction. Like you could read through all of them. Of course, like then I have like some specific teams for like Zoro and stuff. I'll use this on Zoro and Akainu. And this gives me Warlord, which pretty much gives me status effect increase and um, allows me to stay in hockey state longer with Zoro or stay in Akainu magma state longer with him. Uh, so yeah, I, like these tags are really important eventually, but in the beginning, I would say focus on just percentage and how you do that is same color, boosting them, skilling them up, leveling them up, um, giving them nine star medals and all that. So for all your support units, so pretty simple, I guess, like pretty simple. And that's it. Once you got that going for you, you got, you got your main character, you got some good support. 
And now you can finally, finally take yourself into league battle and challenge challenge everyone, you know? I also do want to talk about Hyper Boost real quick. So if I go in here, Hyper Boost is pretty much uh, once you get the character Boost 2 over here, and you also get him, he's level 100 already. Then if you get more frags, like if you start putting more frags into him, you'll start hyper boosting them where you could get even more stats. And then when you get to the hyper boost level, like it's harder for four stars. So that's why I generally say you want to do your three stars and stuff first. And um, so like if I go to order receive, like all the beginning characters I got, all these first characters you get, they're easier to hyper boost. So I hyper boost these. And it's also important to keep in mind that look at this like so for example if i look at zoro he's a two-star unit if i look at his hyper boost it gives me plus so it gives me plus three plus five to every every character like my account in general it gives me that so i have a total of 46 hyper boost right so this plus 56 plus 44 plus 146 is to every character i own it adds that base base stat so it's really nice to have, right? It takes a while. This is more of like a late game thing. But I just want to show you guys that you should hyper boost your two stars and three stars first because as we saw, his hyper boost gives plus, plus three and five, right? And he's a two star defender. If I look at an EX highest rarity character defender or whatever. So if I go on order receive again, so let's look at Zephyr, also a green defender. He's an EX, highest rarity. You would expect his hyper boost to give you like crazy stats, but no, these guys give plus one and plus three. So you're probably like, what the heck? Like, what is that? So that's exactly right. Like Bandai actually wants you to prioritize hyper boosting the weaker units first and they reward you with more stats if you actually do so. So you want to focus all your two stars. So me personally, I already hyper boosted all my two stars. I'm working on hyper boosting all my three stars and then eventually I will hyper boost four stars that I want. So I don't care about hyper boosting those. But um, how you do that is by having a bunch of frags. You have boost orbs and stuff. It takes a lot of bounty coins as well. But if you click these three dots over here, you go under items and then you go into fragments and orbs. You can filter this based on orbs owned. Flip it around if you have to. And I think it's around 1800 frags or so you need. So all these characters, I can hyper boost already. So this Nami, this Chu, this Don, Don Krieg. All these characters, I should be able to go in and hyper boost since I have so many frags already. So if they have above like 1800, I would recommend you already hyper boost them and um, start getting to it. Obviously, it's a late game thing, but I thought it would be good to tell you guys right now. All right. So now that we've talked about all the boring stuff, I guess, like whatever you want to consider it, all like the account building and gotcha and stuff. Now we talked about that. We can finally go in and play some league battle, which is the main game mode so if i go into league battle we got my moria team and with you know we got some good support and all of that we worked on all, all of it so now you could actually go into league battle you guys are obviously going to be in lower leagues when you're starting off you start off with like c or something and you pretty much play against bots until you get to aim a minus that's when you really start getting real characters so as you can see your rewards even get higher you start getting some four star frags but you want to push as high as you can the higher you push the easier it keeps getting so look at this once you're eventually in ss you're getting more frags you're getting more gems every season which is like every two weeks or so um and all that so definitely make sure you push your way into ss league right there's also challenge battle we already talked about how this changes if you are grinding like if you want to grind this game I would recommend grinding the challenge battle. Try getting top 5,000, top 2,500, whatever you can. As a beginner, it should be easy as well. It's because you're like on equal playing field uh, on some of the game modes, especially because everyone's level 80 on some of the game modes and stuff. So especially those game modes, I would recommend you grind because you need to start getting better medals and all that. And getting these transfer traits is going to give you a big boost 
uh, in the beginning. So if you could do that, I would say even just push as high as you can in League Battle once you hit a stopping point, then push really high in Challenge Battle. And you could play this infinitely, like if you got the time for it, you know? So don't even, don't even stop if you got nothing to do. Lead Battle, on the other hand, I see a lot of new players making um, a huge mistake where you, they see these treasure chances, they play four League Battle matches, and then it'll say zero out of four. And then they stop playing. Uh, they stop playing because they think it's a stamina system where you can't play. This actually isn't a stamina system at all. It's actually just a reward system. So you have four chances to get rewards, where which could be frags and all that. So if I go in this League Reward thing, you could get some of these character frags over here and just randomly you also get random stuff like you know like all these little things over here and stuff you could randomly pick up chance cards and these chance cards are actually a new feature that came out recently and they allow you to um when you do have at least one or more treasure chance and you win the match with these you will be able to get uh fragments for a character you pick so these regular ones allow you to use step ups, right? So you can choose a step up. I'm going for Vista right now because I wanted to, wanted to get to six star, and you get you actually really get a lot of fragments, so it's really nice. And then these black ones allow you to use bounty fest units, not EX or anything, bounty fest units. And every time you win with this equip, so if I changed it to the black one, now if I won, I would get fragments for Tesoro. So that's really nice as well. If you lose, you don't lose it. So it's nice. But you will lose the treasure chance if you don't use it at all by the end of the season. So make sure you guys use them and all that. So yeah, avoid the mistake of not grinding League Battle even when this treasure chance is gone. Because uh, you could keep grinding and gathering battle points that you could use to uh, pretty much summon on... Um, like not summon sorry you could use to get frags for these other characters so another thing you really want to do before you do head in and um play you know play league battle and all that is actually study your main and see what they're able to do so uh let's just say zephyr was my main so since zephyr is out right now click on order received since some of you guys might have zephyr i'm gonna go look at his skills click the skill see what it does okay um, it's just a, it's an invincible skill, so I could do that, change it to, to a different state. So I, they give me buff state, that means I could use Warlord with that. And um, I also want to keep in mind he's a defender, so I'm going to be capturing the first flag, defending that flag, uh, charging up the treasure gauge, and defending with him because he's a defender. And I'm going to read his traits, see what he does. He does extra damage to power users and stuff. So using my one piece knowledge, I'm going to target um, power users that, you know, like I could clap and stuff. So that's what that's where your mind should be. And always keep in mind, there's three classes to the game. Attackers, defenders, runners. Attackers generally just run up on you and try um, <laughs> just try killing people, helping out your teammates and stuff. Runners always want to put pressure on the enemy flag like you should never be in your team's flag you should always be going up pushing up trying to put pressure on the enemy defenders on the other hand should always be staying on your flag and trying to defend and try not to lose your flags also keep in mind there is colors in this game uh pretty much reds do more damage to greens greens do more damage to blues blues do more damage to reds so like generally keep that in mind as well when you're playing so yeah, that's definitely the first thing you really need to keep in mind is your roll. Make sure you're not capturing the first flag as, as you know, like a runner. We always go for mid flag as a runner. If you're a defender, capture the first flag, defend it up, like play it slow, go to the next flag your teammates got, defend it up. Remember, this is a team game. This is not a 1v1. This is a team game where the team in the end who has the most flags will win. So you really have to play your part if you're a runner, go put pressure, try getting more flags so your team has more flags. And if you're a defender, if you already have more flags, defend the flags that you currently have and don't push. But that being said, sometimes you do got to break the mold. And if you're a defender, you're like, all right, let me push up because the team needs help and they can't really do much. So I'm going to push up. Or if I'm a runner, I, I'll stay back right now because the game's close to finishing. There's no point of pushing up. Let's just defend even though I'm a runner. You know, so there are times where you have to break the mold 
and not just play by your role, obviously. But generally, make sure you're doing your role. Other gameplay tips are watching your map. Always be looking at the mini map on the top right because you don't want to you don't want to see no one back capping like last second. Like it's 30 seconds left and you see someone's going to your home flag. Don't just think your team's gonna do it. Probably send out a little emote saying guard treasure or watch your six. But you want to go and go defend the flag. So always be mindful of the map. Uh, other tips are premature dodging. I see a lot of new players that are always dodging when they feel like it. Like in the beginning of the game, I understand like when you're when the match just starts, you dodge trying to get speed and trying to get to that mid flag faster. But once you're after that, like you should never dodge just randomly and you should dodge like you should really be careful with your dodge and treat it like a skill instead of just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to dodge to get to you quicker. Like, no. There's perfect dodging in this game, so you want to try always, like, dodging at the right time, if you know what I mean. Um, there's also a thing called the dodge glitch, as I like to call it. And this is where you dodge and let go of the analog, and it'll give you a little invincibility frame. So I abuse this a lot, and I use it on Roger Kamusari and stuff. You could also even use it on the little fishy in Dressrosa stage. Um... So, um, keep that in mind. That's like kind of like an advanced gameplay tip uh, that a lot of people don't know. Next is predictable skills. I see a lot of new players uh, just, they don't bait, bait out the dodge. So like, what I like to do is do a normal attack, get the enemy to dodge. Uh, so I could then pop my skill and guaranteed get a hit on them. Don't just go there, walking straight up to him, click your skill and expect expect to hit it because the guy's just gonna perfect dodge it and you're gonna be like oh what <laughs> like how do you predict it because you were being mad predictable you know like don't always just go in and do your skill do your normal attack so you have a normal attack button uh, make them dodge and then pop your skill the last thing i would say is just pushing too much during the end game i see a lot of players like forgetting the the goal of this game it's not team deathmatch we're not here to just go and push and like kill people we're here to Defend, like we're here to get the flags we're here to get more flags than the enemy and hold those down in the end like if you see an opportunity to push yeah go for it like try pushing for that 4-1 or that 5-0 but generally if you have a 3-2 it's solid the enemy the enemy team is not about to get team boost um team boost is also another aspect that i didn't really talk about it's pretty much like they once team boost hits it builds up slowly whatever team has more flags uh get it faster so whenever team boost hits, they just get more attack, like a lot more attack. Sometimes they get HP recovery depending on what character. Like for example, if I show you um, uh, like Shiki, Shiki gives his team a recovery team boost. So um, for example, like when team boost hits, he'll give everyone HP recovery. Um, so keep in mind of team boost. But uh, like I was saying, if, if you know the enemy is not going to get team boost near the end of the game and you already have more flags, there shouldn't really be any reason to keep pushing and attacking the enemies. Like it's it's a it's a tactical game. It's not just team deathmatch. So that would be my last gameplay tip: is to keep in mind what's you, what's your goal when you're playing. It's not just to go and get the most kills or the most captures or anything. It's more so about seeing what your team's doing like being cohesive, trying to trying to get more flags, trying to defend those flags. And yeah, just That's like it. that, like, it's a three minute I'm match every time, so yeah, three minutes, help, help, help. like, you can mess around, but when it comes to the final minute, I'm helping, I'm helping. you really need to focus on having more flags than your enemy team and oh, holding it down, people. like, holding it, sp spread out if you gotta, like, keep, Maybe keep your up. distance yeah, with your teammates up. just in case they get popped. <laughs> last second uh, and you can come in and defend and all that, that was a so solid dub right there. That yeah was that's pretty much all i have to say like keep in mind of what your go true goal is all right so i think i just about covered everything uh, i'm sure there's a few little things i missed so if you are an og player watching this video definitely leave your thoughts and stuff so new players could see like what you have to say some advice you have for them and stuff in the comments that'll be really great um, of course, join the Discord if you have any questions and stuff. We we help out all the new players over there. If I can't help you, the mods will or some of the other players will. And it's really great. But generally, what you got to do in this game is get a nice character in the beginning. Whether it's EX. I If I, if you were my friend and I'm telling you to play it, I would tell you to go for the strongest EX. 
and get to SS, finish your challenge battles every week, get to SS, like, however quick you can, get some good medals, get some good support, and it's harder in the beginning, but it gets easier and easier the first time you get to SS because you're getting more gems, you're getting more frags, and um, yeah, you're, it just gets easier and easier to get more characters. And um, I feel like that's when the game really clicks and becomes more fun because then you're able to get more characters to play with and experiment with, have fun with, but also um, you're already winning, right? Like <laughs> you're already getting the SS and you're like SS, once you're in SS, even if you're at the bottom of SS, you're pretty much equal to the number one player in the game. Cause he's what, he's getting 20 extra gems compared to you. Uh, not getting anything more for grinding all day. So all you need to do is get to SS and you should be good. But let me know if I missed any other tips in the comments below. Generally, I should have covered everything. And I hope this video really does help you beginners. Now is a great time to start. Make sure you go watch my tier list video to know which characters you should be going for. You can also watch my F2P Soul series to see how I even play the game specifically when I'm free to play and have nothing to spend on and starting the game fresh. So I'll leave that uh, both those videos in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys found this video helpful. Definitely leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Join the Discord for all for all the help you would ever need and stuff. It does get toxic sometimes, but you could, you know, just add the mods and stuff if if you're not <laughs> if you if it's too toxic. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next live stream or video. Peace.